And we're live. Uh, Hi, everyone. Woo. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're you. here to play some more Crypt of the Devil Lich. This is uh, the fifth edition version of it. Level 15 characters. We uh, ran around last session, made it through a few rooms. Um, got shunted back to a strange room that's rotating. And, uh, yeah, now we're gonna keep going, see if you all can figure out, uh, the trick to getting through that room with all the doors. Uh, yeah, that's where we are. That's what we're doing. Let me double check my audio levels. Everything looks good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of introductions. Uh, you know, tell me who you are and who you're playing. We'll do plugs at the end. Uh, yeah, we'll go in the order of the overlay. Uh, so we'll start off with Bert. Uh, I guess that's me. Um, yeah, I'm Bert. I'm playing a pretty much a straight up barbarian for this one, Bjorn, the Battleborn. He's actually quite familiar with working with spellcasters um, to kill other spellcasters. Nice. <laughs> a very special set of skills. Exactly. All right. Nice. Moving on down the list, we got us a Dan. Hey, everybody. Dan with the Defenders of Cobalt. I'm playing uh, Grimgar, our cleric, or our Twilight cleric. Uh, and I, so far, I've been uh, stingy with my spells. So we'll see how long I can hold out on that. May not be a bad idea. Spec will need them. Yeah. Somehow. All right. Throwing us over to the other side. Up top, we got Eddie. Oh, goodness. I'm Eddie. Uh, I am playing uh, a uh, variant feral tiefling named The Knight, and I've got too many classes all mashed together, but essentially I am an assassin with some other stuff mixed in. Uh, I take myself way too seriously, and nobody else does. There we go. Uh, moving down our list, we got Jake. Hey, I'm Jake. I'm with the Defenders of Cobalt, and today I'll be playing a Levi Fairhill, a, uh, a zealot barbarian, uh, something of a cleric, and uh, also a little something of a rogue. He likes to sneak into places where monsters make their hang their hats and then uh, smack the hats off their heads. It's fair. Absolutely fair. Uh, and last but not least, there's Jeremy. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm a proudly adopted Cobalt. I'm going to be playing Silas, the neutral, hungry Yuan-Ti Echo Knight, who is a, a cheap teleporting bastard. There we go. It's fantastic. Uh, and you might notice there's no Jordan tonight. Uh, he had some prior commitments and some family stuff come up, so he is not life. able to <laughs> join us. So, uh, yeah. But, there is no life out of D&D. &D. Oh, my gosh. We'll continue on, though. So, yeah. You all made it into the cave entrance. You fought the crazy vampire monk. You found the hidden door. You made your way into this giant room that rotates and you overcame that by just breaking one of the doors so it can't close. Uh, you then made it into this room with a false floor that had some crazy illusion stuff going on and you all... Uh, managed to make your way across that. That was a little hectic, but you did it. Uh, and then you finally came to this ginormous room with just lined with doors. Each door had a very odd keyhole, almost like a funnel going into it uh, with this giant crystal uh, hourglass. It's just magically just floating there in the air. Uh, and as soon as you entered in, it started you know, it flipped, started counting down. It gave you about 30 minutes, you'd guess. Uh, and it was, uh, looked like powdered ruby or something like that inside of it. Uh, just this very bright, reflective red sand in there. Uh, but you all weren't able to figure out what was going on. And it teleported you back to this rotating room. So that's where we're picking up. Uh, you've still got your task to stop 
the Devil Lich. You've got some of your own clues and hints that you've picked up so far. Uh, so let's just get right back into it. What's going on? I wonder if we should try and figure out at least one room in this dungeon instead of just mm -hmm. reversing our way through everything. I don't know. Are you after 15 minutes of straight cursing yeah. <laughs> to every god imaginable? Uh, yeah. Are any of you able to guess perhaps how deep you went into that strange arcane darkness or perhaps what it was that did such grievous wounds to you? I mean, I couldn't dispel it, so, eh. <laughs> well, let's say somebody were to stay just above the level. Do you think you maybe fell 30 feet or less? Oh, it wasn't very far down. I it was maybe think. like 12 feet. Just enough to bump a bit on the way down. Yeah. So I've got half a mind to just do the like levitation boot teleport trick and just hang out above the darkness and send my little clone down into there and just whack away. Oh. I've got the blind fighting style. Yeah. Just send my little dude down in there and just let him blindly hack away at whatever is crawling around down there. Yeah. Chuck, while everybody else is talking, I'm going to check these two dead bodies. Okay. See what I, I find. Mean. Uh, those are bodies that you had searched previously. Oh, did we? Yeah. I couldn't remember if we searched them. Uh, you found... Oh, what did you find? I thought for some reason we actually never searched them. Yeah, I didn't think we had actually you, searched them because we mentioned them? something about that. I think we just uh, passed them. Okay. We, 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 talked we, to, we talked to the spirit of one of them, and then I think we left. Okay. Is the room still revolving? Uh, you're not sh Well... Because we can look through the one broken door to see yeah. if there's movement. Uh, mm. I'll say this. So last time you were all in here, uh, you were able to find all of the pressure plates on the floor. And I've got those marked in red there. Um, mm -hmm. At the moment, it is not rotating. It looks like that one broken door is lined up with the hallway that you entered uh, from the outside, you came in. Uh, okay, so it seems like it returns back to like a static position, maybe. Yeah, it looks like it reset. Uh, let's see. So if you were to search those skeletons, uh, one's got a broken long sword. Uh, the other one is laying on top of a silver scroll tube. Ooh. Um. And yeah, that was really it. They didn't really have anything on them. A silver scroll tube sounds. Uh, as I'm looking through them, I'll look at the silver scroll tube and the broken short sword, and I'll I'll just kind of like meh at the silver scroll tube and put it on the ground as it rolls away from me, and keep looking at the broken sword. Okay. Well, I'll probably look at the scroll tube. Sure. So. Yeah. If you check out the scroll tube, uh, are you going to open it up? Sure. It'll probably only explode on my face for a lot of damage. Uh, as you open it up, you see that it does not explode on your face. And looking inside is a rolled up piece of parchment. Oh, well, whoever didn't make it explode on my face. Big mistake on their part. Yeah, it is. Um, let's look at that parchment. Maybe sure. it has some insight. I'll show this to everyone. Perhaps we uh, should have done this in the first place. Oh, crap. Hang on. There we go. Uh, and Dan, I leave this up to you to uh, read out to the oh, stream. This is what and I the get for asking things. Yeah, it is. The shards of true death are key, scattered about on levels three, encased in a crystal prison without a door, but only the first. There are five more. I think this is the same, uh, same thing the other guy was saying way earlier. Um, I hold the next shard of true death, but beware my fiery breath. The shard is as safe as can be hidden behind the reverse of a party. Stuck fast is the shard. Removing it is torturously hard. Beyond the constant crimson drips cloaked in darkness, this shard sits. That sounds 
like uh, maybe the other room that we were just in, possibly. Uh, lest all hope fades, guarded by gold, solve the riddle of swords, the last shard behold. Okay, and that's that's what you got. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the room's not rotating at the moment. Uh, kind of what you figured out from last time you were here, you have to activate one of these pressure plates to start the rotation. Uh, but you also know that some of these pressure plates uh, drop these globes down from the ceiling filled with poison. Yep. Luckily, we have immunity to poison, so that's not so concerning. Yeah. Um, beyond the constant crimson drips sounds like, you know, the uh, room with the hourglass. Could be. Not How do that... we get beyond that room, though? Probably through one of those locked doors. Uh, either that or for some strange reason, the shard is actually closer than we think. Cloaked in darkness. <laughs> Hard to say. Yeah. So. Any which way, we don't know anything about anything yet. So. I wonder if we can. I mean, there's lots of doors in here. Can we try and open any of these other doors or do any of them? You can certainly try. Open? So. I don't think we actually tried to open any of them. So uh, no, you just worked with that one door that you managed to, which is the bottom door. Yes, it is. All right, I might just go around from door to door and then, you know, okay. just work clockwise from the broken door. Sure. Uh, let's see. So, uh, which door do you want to start with? We'll go with this one here. Sure. Give me just a second. So we'll just go clockwise from the broken door. Now, did we thoroughly examine this um, glyph on the floor to see if any of the spokes look different than another? You, you've looked it over before, yeah, and they all look identical. Each spoke points at a door. Um, the, you know, it's engraved or, you know, uh whatever you call it into the floor and then they've got silver and gold you know inlaid into it uh but they all look identical they're all the same length they've all got the, the same look to it um yeah. i don't think we really interact with it other than looking at it though uh okay so what are you doing with that door there uh, I mean, Grimgar. trying to, to do door things with it. Okay. <laughs> so you move up. You grab the handle. Feels locked. Doesn't doesn't give. Okay. I mean, uh, if it's locked, I don't I don't have any cool skills to get into it. So other how, than how the, high up is the ceiling? Uh, I think it's about thirty feet. Okay. Is there? Is it just flat? These uh, -like things. It's got all these globe. It's like flat with these weird globe-like things, kind of protruding mm -hmm. out. Almost. How do like, they protrude? Like are they like, like mostly chandeliers on a chain? No, think like uh, like blisters boiling out. Okay. So they're like half set uh, in the ceiling. And and if I recall, those are like the the trap. Effectively, that's what falls down. And yeah, full of certain poison. plates. If you step on them, it they drop from above, uh, releasing that poison. Mm. Well, it's would it be possible to uh, get um, a read on. We accidentally dropped one of these earlier, didn't we? Yeah, I think couple a couple of them. of them fell. Yeah. Okay, I, I want to pick up one of the broken shards of that, and I want to examine the construction of it. What's it made of? Glass. It's okay. just made of uh, like an almost like opaque glass. Um, the outside of it's smooth. Inside of it's got this gnarly kind of, I uh, think like oil style sheen inside of it. It's 
slick with whatever noxious poisons were inside of it. But other than that, it's just glass. Relatively, you know. Um, think like a, you know, a chandelier uh, or a, like a glass dome on a ceiling light. So, you know, it's maybe like eighth of an inch thick. So it's not... It's not thin by any means. Um, yeah. Chuck, uh, my imp and I would like to fly up to the ceiling yeah. somewhere where we're going to be not above anybody. Yeah. And uh, find one of these little blisters on the ceiling and see if there's, I'd like to try or attempt to see if there's any way that I can try and extract one of these things intact. Sure. Uh, do you have any particular, oh, I just threw something accidentally. Any particular skills that you want to, Try and leverage in um, this? Just, just thievery. I mean, general thievery. I'm, I've got my yeah. thieves tools that yeah. I'm proficient in. So Go ahead and roll that for me. Okay. Uh, am I just doing, is this sleight of hand or is this? Uh, sleight of hand is fine. Okay. Then I will roll that. I'll go back here. 28. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You spend a few minutes, you can kind of slip the the shims of like your lock pick kit in there's not a lot of pressure holding it in uh so eventually you can pop it out and you've got one of these globes and it's completely encased so you got just this glass sphere with these lights inside of it and you can feel the fluid kind of sloshing around um it looks like maybe you know initial look maybe some kind of magical effect holding it in and then releasing it because you don't see any mechanism inside of it it's just a you know it's literally just a glass globe holding a bunch of this liquid mm -hmm. yeah okay um does anybody have like empty bottles or anything like that that, that we want to try and get some of this stuff out of this um i am immune to poison i think moment, all of you so are at the time we're the all immune to poison right now Oh yeah, so I could—I mean, I could try very carefully to crack the top of this thing open, so we could try and you know, gently dip something in it to get some out. Since while it sounds like this thing's pretty big, I don't okay. know that we want to carry it around. What you got, Bert? While you're up there, I'll call out. It seems to me if this room is a mechanical creation, instead of playing by its rules, let's break the mechanism. While you're up there. See if there's some trap door, some maintenance hatch. Oh, yeah, I can I can go back up to yeah. the after I carry that globe down to the bottom and rest it on the floor. I can go back up yeah. and just start looking around. You just for want to anything. give me a perception test. OK. Um, oh, let's see here. Uh, and so I'm correct in that no one has stepped on any of these. Switches on the ground. OK. I don't know. And while it's going, I'll just continue to move around. I'm going to thaumaturgy the doors instead. That would uh, be wiser. Nothing happens when you thaumaturgy it. Okay. Uh, the night, your perception test, you are confident that there's no hidden hatches or anything on the ceiling. Okay. Hmm. I want to do the same thing on the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like particularly, like, the center point in, has to be like in the middle of the room where that glyph is yeah okay uh, i'm gonna see if i can rip it up out of the ground sure i mean like it, it was metals and such that's you know, it's in the inlay yeah it's right. uh it's soft metal gold and silver yeah so just you can easily out. yeah just gouge it out uh it'll take you you know maybe 15 20 minutes to get all of it out uh, but if you do, it's enough gold for, let me find out, for, um, all together you dig out about 50 gold worth of silver and about 100 gold worth of gold. So you just nice. got this shaving, shavings of silver and gold that's worth a pretty decent chunk but of coin. But it didn't reveal anything It beneath. did not reveal anything underneath. Floor of stone? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I've got a warhammer. It's gonna start smashing it. <laughs> I'm gonna try to smash through the floor. <laughs> you spend some time hammering on this floor, chips of uh, you know, the whatever the stone is, granite starts kind of flying up into it. Um it feels solid. 
like it's not uh, you're not getting a any impression that there's a hollow underneath. Um, but yeah, you don't make it through to anything. Uh, Dan, when your thaumaturgy fell, do you want to try anything else out with that door? I mean, I'll probably just go pull on it to make sure it's not just like latched in some stupid manner, but sure. Uh, I lost my sure. Uh, go ahead and give me a Let's see. Actually, you nothing happens. You do when you take your hand away from the the knob to try and open it. Your hand's just covered in this strange bat, black oily substance. Ah, uh, it was trapped. <laughs> Maybe being immune to poison right now is a very good thing for you. <laughs> I'll just. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can spend a moment wiping it off, and it's fine. Yeah, just smear it on the wall. There you go. So what's next? The floor doesn't give any results. The ceiling doesn't give any results. The two doors that have been tried are locked. All right. Uh, frustrated not being able to get to the mechanism. I'm going to start beating doors down. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what door do you want to start with? You just want to ping it on the map. The opposite me? one. So, like, if this is the one we broke, I'm going yeah. to start at the opposite okay. end. So I'm not going to stand full center of the door. I'm going to stand to the side, do a swing into it. Yeah. Go ahead and give me an attack. Okay. Uh, attack. Uh, Warhammer. And then you have to hit the attack button. There you go. That's a pretty good tag. Oh, yeah. Uh, roll me some damage for that, too. I mean, for a door, I'd be amazed if the door isn't hit by a 26. Yeah, right? <laughs> the door's like, whoa, oh, yeah. whoa. You smash the door. Now, these are like stone doors, but you break it, and the door kind of just gives in the center, and it falls apart. And as it does... Um, Luckily, you were standing off to the side because it is a, it's that flat wall, that flat stone wall underneath of it uh, with holes all throughout it. And as the wall falls away, all of a sudden, this volley of darts launches out and shoots across the room um, and clatters off the opposite wall. They fly down that hallway that was uh, from the broken door. Uh, but luckily, you were standing off to the side, and none of them caught you. Nice. So, All right. I'm just gonna go clockwise <laughs> toward sure. the door. I'll warn everyone after seeing that. Yeah. So <laughs> Don't get in the way. <laughs> door two is broken. Let's go up to this one. Just make sure that I'm not directly across from any doors okay. he's beating down. <laughs> Uh, same thing. I just give me damage on this one. You're gonna hit it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you crack the door. You can see it. Uh, it's got kind of like the the shattering of stone all over. It'll probably take another hit to do the job. Do you want to go ahead and take yeah. another swing? Yeah. So thirteen is the minimal damage I can possibly do. Oh wow. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. If you just swing again, you got it. That's not a problem then. You're doing uh, the same thing, standing off to the side. Sure. All right, cool. Why doesn't everyone go ahead and make me a dexterity save? Oh no, everyone. Oh boy. Do I if I'm still on the ceiling, do I need to? Yep. Okay. Is it Dexterity magical in nature? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I, I do with advantage on this then. Cool. As yeah. Well. It will be against a magical effect. <laughs> 13. Oh, is gosh. Okay. Wait, no. That only rolled it once, I think. Uh, or did, how did it Did that not roll? Your, no, your it dexterity. rolled twice. And oh, it you got an eight the and best. Three. Yeah. yeah. Our okay. save's not so strong. Oh, it so it is looking like uh, the knight is the only one who passes. Yeah, that's not too surprising. Cool. So uh, 
Oh gosh, why do I have to do math? That's terrible. Uh, everybody's dead in the game. The knight, you take 17 points of damage as Ooh. this door <clears throat> falls away from the blank wall behind it. There's like this magical like rune set into it. And from the center of that launches this marble of what looks like fire right into the center of the room. And it detonates. The knight, you mm. take 17 points of damage. Everyone else... Is it it's is it fire, fire damage? It is fire. Okay. I uh, I do have uh, immunity to fire while I'm with my end. Okay, cool. So yeah, I, I also have such uh, okay. protection. So those of you who failed, it is 35 fire damage. But if you've got oh. something that adjusts that, please go for it. Holy cow! Double check. I'm pretty sure that's a no. It's a trap. Okay. Ooh. Oops. Okay. That door is down. So what is resistance? That gives you half, half. damage? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So round up. Uh, oh. So that would be 17 18, for you. 17. Yeah. Okay. So as I'm standing upside down on the ceiling and get hit right center mass with this fireball, uh, the smoke dissipates and I've still got like some flames and stuff just kind of flickering off my chest i pull out my uh 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 my pipe of smoke monsters and just kind of light it off of the flames slowly go. dying on my own chest there you go <laughs> take a big drag on it and then puff out something this in the shape of a small devil just do an exasperated sigh and use my second wind <laughs> <laughs> oh. that's fair uh, okay so what next? Uh, well, uh, take stock. I'm gonna of how cast bad healing word. Is. Okay, Jake, how much but do you? I, go ahead. I, I think I should keep going, but I'll look to everyone. <laughs> Just got scorched. Yeah. yeah. I'll just I'll just uh, put my pipe back in my mouth and kind of. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Just kind of roll my hands through the air, like continue. Okay. Uh, Everybody will get five healing. So nice. Uh, oh, nice. So oh, are you nice. moving up to that door next there, Bjorn? Yeah. Just cool. going clockwise. Yeah. So you don't need to roll damage. We know you can do a minimum of 13. So if it doesn't take you one hit, it takes you two. As you smash this door down, it reveals a hallway behind it. A hallway you do not recognize. Uh, it reveals a hallway. It's about 80 feet long, 20 feet wide. Floor is just unmarked, plain, smooth stone. And the hallway is flanked by seven pairs of stone statues. Let me... Before we adventure down, I'm going to go ahead and drink my potion of greater healing. Hopping you all over to another scene, because that's what you see. Let me get that adjusted for the stream. Um, seven pairs of stone statues. Some depict evil warlords smiting unseen foes with weapons. Others depict hideous demons crouching, ready to spring. Others uh, depict timid halflings, frail-looking wizards, and a pair of stone double doors is at the opposite end of the hall. Ooh. Well, would you like for me to send forth the test dummy? I am carrying on muted here. Is there okay. one of each on each side, or yep. I mean, is there? It's a it's a go, match on each side. Okay. Go back to the middle chamber, pick up one of the bodies, and just hurl it across the room. Sure. So yeah, you pick up one of them skeletons and you chuck it into the room as far as you can. Just absolutely nothing happens. It just clatters to the floor. The bones break apart. Mm. Hidden behind the reverse of the mm. party. These look like parties of adventurers here on either side. Mm -hmm. But which one would be the reverse one? I 
And there's no difference from left to right between the statues? No. Mm. Other than their order, it looks like. Nope, same order. That's kind of hard to see because the viewing okay. angle's off. So these halflings are right across from each other. The warlords, the demon. Okay. Yeah. Can we see into the niches that they're sat into? Yeah. So they're they're just set into these small little alcoves, just plain stone behind them. Doesn't seem to be anything. Um, you know, you're still looking in from that circular room. Uh, so to get a better look, you might have to kind of move in. So looking at the picture, um, the figures that duplicate the knight, the little halfling guy, they're posed, right? Like just in the picture, they're posed and not like. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Okay. Now, I will say you there is a duplicate for each one of these statues. Mm -hmm. the, the picture doesn't show it real well, but yeah. So there's two of the warlords, two of the halflings, the, two of the suits there. armors. Does there appear to be any difference in the duplicates? No. How tall is the ceiling? Um, it's going to be, it's an arched ceiling at its highest is, let's see, 80 feet long, 20 feet wide. Uh, it's going to be about 10 feet tall. Okay, so couldn't really hover above the figures no. then. Okay. No. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use uh, thaumaturgy to shake the ground a little bit in that hallway. Okay. Just see if that rattles anything. Uh, yeah, you use your thaumaturgy. It shakes a little bit. You can see it disturbs some dust. Um, okay. but none of the pieces seem to move. You don't notice any hidden, like, you know, movement or articulation points or anything like that. Are there any torches or anything, any sources of light? No, it would just be whatever light you're all working with. Okay. So it's just a dark hallway. Okay. Yeah. Jokey. I mean, I guess until we get in there. Yeah. Who are you going to move I can, in? I can send my, my little dude out up to a thousand feet away. Okay. Yeah. Just going to have him run to the other end of the hole? Yeah, just see if anything happens to him. Okay. Maybe have him, like, uh, you know, like, hit tiles on his way over. You know, okay. This is like, if, if it's like a flagstone setup, yeah. like the, the picture depicts, yeah. maybe just... Sure. Do, 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 do. Yeah. A goofy scene is you see, like, this shadow puppet <laughs> version of a lizard man, like, tap dancing along all the different stones. Your tap dancing lizard duplicate makes it clear to the other side, being sure to hit every single tile, and they are absolutely fine. Do you want me to have it, I don't know, poke at any of the statues? Do you get any kind of feedback from this clone of yours? Yeah, so basically while this is going on, it's very similar to like a wizard that has a familiar. Yeah. While style is as nice as it is, I while well, Silas is doing it, he has to just sit. He's like deaf and blind to everything okay. around yeah. him, but it can he can fully see and hear and everything sure. of what it's experiencing. So I will tell you one bit of information. As you get to this third statue, um, there is an inscription on the bottom of it. None of the others have inscriptions, mm. including his pair. His pair has it as well. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I figured. Yeah. No. Nope. Okay. If it's something that I can read, like I can still speak mm -hmm. what I can see. So if it's something that I can read, I'll share it with the group. If it's not, then it is inscribed. Hey there, Captain. Uh, it is inscribed. Maliva Demon Stalker. Maliva Demon Stalker. It's inscribed on the statue. I don't, I don't know what that means. Okay, um, so there is one clue that we had hidden behind the reverse of a party. Mm. This shard is as safe as can be hidden behind the reverse of a party. Can the statues be 
turned or manipulated, maybe. You want to go try it? I don't want to, but I will because I have the idea. Okay. Uh, it's a good idea. Which, which of these statues is called Maleva Demon Stalker? The third one in. So, uh, yep, that's it exactly. What Dan's pinging right there. Was mm. What is that uh, demon-looking one right next to it called? None, none of the other ones have inscriptions. Mm. The third pair of statues are the only one with inscriptions, and they're both inscribed with the same thing. Maleva Demon Stalker. I'm going to glare at it really hard from the ceiling, and my imp is going to curse in Infernal. Okay. Nothing happens. So, Dan, are you moving in? I don't want to, but yeah. Yeah, let's, okay. go, let's go ahead. We'll just get up to the first statue here. You move up to the first statue. Nothing happens. I figure I'll, you know, see if I can manipulate it in any way, shape, or form. It or... does not move. Does not wiggle. Doesn't seem to have any points of articulation. Just a plain old statue. And behind it? Uh, just the alcove. Bare, empty. You can give me a perception test if you want to do a thorough search. Sure. Just in case. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. You are extremely confident that there's nothing behind it. Just a wall. <laughs> and I'll tell you All what, right. I'll let you carry that 21 forward to any other one of these that you want to search as well. Okay. I mean, I figure I'll just kind of move down this side and just okay. check, check each one. What figure of them. is opposite Demon Slayer? Another Demon Slayer. So it's just a mirror image. Does that one also have the, the inscription? Plate? Yep. Uh, and Dan, same thing. None of them move, none of them wiggle. Thorough search reveals nothing. Maybe look at the back sides of them uh, i included that when you said you were looking okay. in the alcove behind it okay i wasn't sure if this is one of those things where saying the right words matters nope, nope. <laughs> can, it the, can the statue i mean without breaking it be turned or rotated that's that's why i just got done doing bert yeah he was okay, giving it a little sorry. wiggle i mean if you really wanted to put some some elbow into it you might be able to rotate or you know knock these over or something like that but just with a regular amount of force, no, they're yeah. extremely heavy, wide bases. Behind uh, the I don't know what that means. Captain, that one you're saying is it's the creature's tail wrapping around its base. Yeah. Um, I have a steel mirror as yeah. part of my pack. Yeah. So, like, if I view one of the things in the mirror, do they look any differently? No. As far as all of you can tell, tell uh, through all the testing that you're doing, they all seem just absolutely mundane. Like there's nothing weird going on here. Shall I send a duplicate over and just try the door then? I mean, for now... I suppose. How about the nameplate? Is it part? Is it etched into the base of the it's, statue, or is it actually a plate? It's etched into the base of the statue. Okay. So yeah, it's not a plate that's been added; just carved into the stone on the base of it. Uh, Jeremy, were you sending your clone down yeah. there to open the doors? I'll kind of back out and away out of the room. Sit down and meditate and send the, okay. the clone forward. Yeah, back You're, out of the hallway. Well, that's yeah. the mm -hmm. your clone gets down there, opens the large double doors. Nothing happens. You do see that it is a, it opens up into like a T. So there's a left and a right, a hallway going left and right. Mm -hmm. And towards the right, looks like a plain door. And towards the left is a, Kind of a funky door. Okay, me... plain door on the right, funky door on the left. Let me find the image of the funky door. Not that one. I've got so many handouts to dig through. There it is. Uh, and this is what the funky door on the left looks like. Um, hmm. 
I got a little description that I'll read to you. A uh, solid door is decorated with an engraved image of a demonic female drow. Uh, her eyes and nostrils and mouth have tunnels leading into the stone uh, through their curved natural prevents. Uh, they're naturally curved going in, so you can't use them. Your clone couldn't look through it. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what you see, this demonic looking female drow face. Okie dokie. Um, I'm not saying it's the smart thing to do, but because I can just make another one, I poke the clone pokes a finger into the holes. Nothing happens to your clone when they do so. Just boop, 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 boop. Okay. Boop. Okay. I have fingered the demon lady and nothing happened. <laughs> try the other door. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a plane. It's actually like a wooden door, like a oak banded door. If you go, and you're talking about the door on the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a plain door. You want to have your clone open it? Why not? Sure. If someone's going to get killed, it may as well be him. It's free. Um, opening the heavy door, uh, you your clone finds itself on the threshold of a well-stocked library. Uh, dim illumination Ooh. flickers from torch sconces. Uh, they're set on f uh, four stone pillars in the middle of the room. Uh, wooden lined shelf uh, like niches are built into the walls, uh, are built into all the stone walls from uh, floor to ceiling. They're packed with old books, tomes, librams, scrolls. There's a solid stone table flanked by several chairs in the middle of the room. Uh, amidst the four wide stone pillars that support uh, the cobwebbed adorned ceiling uh, that's 30 feet up. Mm. A robed and shrouded librarian slowly shuffles around the room with a stack of books cradled to their chest. Um, features are obscured by a hood, uh, but they're seen bent, clearly lame. Uh, and your clone would pick up that the air is extremely dry and heavy with dust. And I've got uh pop to another scene real quick. Oh, All right. I didn't want to hit configure, I wanted to hit activate. There we go. I'll share all that. And then I can only send him like a thousand feet away. I imagine I'm probably getting pretty close yeah. to the limit of that. Yeah. I've gone about as far as I can send him. I apologize I don't have more to share. Well, can you... Well, at least we know it's safe up to the clone, so... I can't... Only on a basic level. Like, I can't make any attack actions with him in this state. I can I can only do attack actions in the short-range version, and this one, it's much more just very simple interactions. Okay. I'm, like, if you try to get its attention or something, like... Like, I could have it reach out and touch it, sure. Or maybe, like, just make some noise and yeah, see if it reacts. If you want me to, I'm glad to do so. Okay. Is that what you want to do? Please do. The shuffling, limping librarian continues doing what they were doing, completely unperturbed by your clone's attempts to gain its attention. Wow, don't, making they, no, making noise in the library didn't even piss right. off. Did mm. not. I have a very terrible hunch that I would very much hope is not true. Perhaps mm -hmm. it simply does not sense my clone because it's not alive. Perhaps. Yeah, uh, some dead things that just sense the living. Perhaps. Well, shall we all go say hello to the librarian? Do you all head down um, there? Why not? I will head down there. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stealth. Okay. This Roll your stealth. If you're gonna gonna stealth. Smite it. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna bring up the rear to see if anything yeah. changes as folks pass. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah. So Bjorn, as you're watching while people walk past it, the statues don't do anything. They really seem to be just statues. Mm. 
Uh, my uh, Chuck, before we enter down that hallway, I, I am going to stealth. I rolled yeah. an 18. Okay. But cool. um, the that orb that I brought down from the ceiling with the poison in it. Yeah. Is it small enough that my imp could carry it? It's like bowling ball sized. Maybe Perfect. a little larger. I, bowling ball to beach ball. We'll go somewhere in there. I'm just going to kind of uh, uh, yell some commands at him in Infernal, and then he's going to pick up the orb and go invisible as I as he just kind of disappears, and then I go into sneaking. Okay, cool. Um, Yeah, you all make it to this, this T intersection here. You turn right to this large wooden door. Uh, you can see inside the library. You can see all the musty, musky books, you know, dust covered. They look very old, very dry. Um, you can see the librarian shuffling around, putting some books up here, taking some books down here. It just looks like busy work. Doesn't seem to uh, pay us any mind then. No. I guess maybe I'll go and uh, you know look at a book, not take it off the shelf, but just you know. Okay. Look at some spines. Sure. Uh, go and give me a wisdom check. Uh, do I want a wisdom check? Let me make sure I'm going to tell you the right check here. I hope it's wisdom, because if it's intelligence, then. <laughs> um, a perception check. Give me a perception oh. check. Oh, that that's okay too. Still wisdom based. Yes. Oh, Looking around, you're not able to really discern this. Is just old books, dust covered. You can't really make the names out. You know, if you want to maybe clear some dirt off one of the spines, you can give it another go. All right, I let's let's go ahead and. And while you're doing this, librarian is just going about their business. You want to give me another perception test? All right. Let's hope it's better than one. It's better than one. Okay. Uh, high or low? Uh, let's go with high. Sure. Okay. Uh, you find that your the spine of this book reads the scriptum malice. Uh, the book with its bindings seem to be covered uh, or the, the cover seems to consist of this scab covered flayed skin oh this book seems evil in nature then it looks that way yeah uh, Chuck, as I'm sneaking around the room, do I find anything besides books of any interest? Uh, so you are specifically looking for something besides books? Yes, something that is not a book. Sure. Um, give me a perception test, but I want it at disadvantage. Wow. You didn't just... You did pretty good. Oh, wow, you did fantastic. Yep. That is that is the lower of the two. Uh, let's see. Um, you actually look, and it's when you start looking up, kind of at the cobweb ceilings. Uh, you actually realize there's some kind of creature hiding up above using the the heavy webbings as covering. Oh, shit. Uh, fantastic. Um, so as I notice that, uh, I'm going to use... Um, let's see here. Yeet. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, yeet. Uh, so I have a, f a feature called Awakened Mind, which allows me to uh, speak telepathically to any creature uh, within thirty feet of me. Okay. Oh, nice. As long as they can speak it, as long as they can speak at least one language. So I'll just kind of alert the party silently to what I have seen. Okay. So you're all aware of there's some creature hiding in the webbing, 
along okay. the th ceiling that's like 30 feet up. Mm. For the moment, I'll try to act unaware, I guess, yet. <clears throat> okay. I'll go ahead. So I'm going to take that as I didn't find any other objects of any interest then. Correct. <laughs> I mean, if you don't consider a creature hiding in the ceiling of interest. Yeah. <laughs> just just books and a thing that probably wants to do us harm. Yeah. Uh, Silas, what were you going to say? I was going to say I'll go ahead and have my duplicate out and ready. Okay. Um, I won't send him up there just yet. Okay. Actually, do you want me to go ahead and have a sentinel up there? Or do we want to not let it know we know? Hmm. Yeah, I'll I'll kind of communicate with everybody and and help facilitate the communication silently. Mm. Okay. And just kind of ask everybody: Should we move on this thing, or should we just pretend we don't see it? Has anyone actually spoken to the librarian? No. All right. Well, moved well, on. I will go and stand in front of the librarian. And say, sure. Okay. I require a book. So the librarian kind of <laughs> stops in front of you. Looks up at you. And, Masks, can oh, you sorry. even read? Uh, it's actually 50 <laughs> feet high up. Uh, that's how tall the mm. ceiling is, and that's where the creature's hiding. Uh, but uh, Bjorn and Levi, as you move up to the library, and the librarian kind of looks up at you too, and you can see very clearly under this hood uh, that this librarian is some form of undead. As um, are most librarians. This is not <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't talk to you. It just stands there for a second, looks at you, and then it goes back to doing its kind of busy work tending to the books. Um, what was the knight's name? The Seeker of Demons? Malice, Malavis. Malava Demon Stalker. That's it. I need a book on Malavis Demon Stalker. He kind of stops and he looks at you kind of puzzled for a second, but then just goes back to doing what they're doing. Yeah. Hmm. Shall I smite this librarian? Even worse, I'll give him a zero star rating. Ooh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you're not going to give, will, him, um, a, you're not gonna give uh, him a radiant review? Uh. <laughs> I was thinking something similarly. I will take my talisman of pure good and uh, touch it to the forehead of this librarian. This will either deal uh, 6d6 radiant damage if it's neither good nor evil, or 8d6 radiant damage if it's evil. Okay. Damn. Okay. Give me just a moment. Excuse me. Oh, you're evil? Good. I'm going to so, kill you then. Oh, you're not so, evil? I'm still going to kill you. I'm going to uh, hurt you a lot. Well, you know, so, there's no middle of the road, road with that god. It's just... <laughs> oh, no, I mean, that doesn't do no damage if they're good then, only neutral or evil. Oh, no, right. it still does 6d6 if they're... Neither oh, okay, so evil. it's just... Okay. Gotcha. So neutral. So 6d6 neutral, right. neutral 8d6 evil. Uh, let's see. <laughs> because doing nothing is still bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good enough. I really enough. dislike that amulet. I touched it once. Tell my wife I said hello. <laughs> Stinking neutrals. All right, Poor so give that to me again, Jake. Uh, a creature that is neither good nor evil in alignment takes 6d6 radiant damage upon touching the talisman. An evil creature takes 8d6 radiant damage upon touching the talisman. Okay, why don't you go and roll me 8d6? Okie dokie. Okie. Nice. That's... Not bad. Okay. You smite the. Is it really cool? Like the guy turning into a skeleton super fast and blowing away in the wind, like in uh, Ray, uh, uh, the final Indiana Jones movie? Um, no, he just kind of sizzles and smokes for a minute and then drops to the ground, slain. Damn. <laughs> as I as, as I see Levi do this, I kind of skulk backwards into the shadows and hide. <laughs> I'll just step over the librarian and start examining some of the books. Sure, if you want to give me a yeah. perception test. 
<laughs> I nod approvingly. Uh, Bjorn, <laughs> are you doing anything with this? Um, I don't know about the thing in the ceiling yet. Uh, um, actually, so uh, the knows. knight telepathically communicated okay. this with everyone. Uh, in which case, I assume that that is some kind of watchdog, so I would prepare for that thing to come down. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you ready up for combat? Yep. Uh, it doesn't seem to be reacting in any way, or at least you're not seeing any movement up there. Uh, you're not exactly sure where it is, but the knight could easily point out its location. Uh, Levi, that was your perception test. Kind of the same yeah. thing I, I told uh, I told Grimgar the first One time. Moment. Yeah. Um, you look, you're not really e- able to discern anything. Maybe if you want to clear some of the dirt and grime off the back of these spines, you could look again. <sighs> I, I wouldn't mind removing the dirt and grime, but more with like, you know, fire. So I think I'll, I'll just to hold off on that for now. Okay. And I'll reconvene with the party to prepare for a giant web monster. Okay. Mm-hmm. I might go ahead and pull that one book I was looking at. Absolutely. So yeah, you take the book out. Uh, are you going to open it up? No, I don't, not yet. I was just going to look at the cover. Okay. Uh, those of you watching the ceiling... As Mm -hmm. soon as Grimgar takes the book out, this creature just demonically crawls down the wall. Mm. Uh, Let me see here. I kind of thought that this might might do it. (laughs) Yeah. It asks for your library card. Oh, no. (laughs) I forgot to bring it with me. So I'm going to show an image. It's a very wide image, but this is... You can get an idea of what this <clears throat> thing looks like as it shimmies down like oh, a mm, homing Frank. missile going straight for Grimgar. Oh, no. This I'll... is the donor's section. Get ready to <laughs> donate. I'll try and move my echo kind of up and diagonally midair to sort of intersect as best sure. as possible. A lot of you had cued actions. Uh, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and give you a surprise round on this. So go ahead. Those of you taking actions against this, except for Grimgar, because Grimgar is doing book stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm busy being the victim here. Yeah, go ahead and do what you were going to do. Okay. Sweet. So this would be... Uh, this is just an action? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll count it as a regular combat round. So regular turning oh. combat. So yeah, this will be, you know... Ooh. Uh, we got Bjorn, the Knight, Levi, and Silas. Uh, oh, why don't this we, is going to be fun. Why don't we start in order, and we're going to go with uh, Bjorn. What are you doing? Or uh, I will step to defend our party member that's pulled the book. Yep. Shield and hammer at the ready. As okay. I move over. Okay. So as soon as this <clears> thing <throat> gets within melee range of you, I'll let you take that swing. Um, let's go up the knight. Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to sneak up on this thing and attack since nobody else is in position yet. It's climbing down one of these pillars towards the night, so it's not on ground level. How far down is it? I was moving 50 feet. By the time you spring into action, I'm going to say it's like 25 feet up. Fantastic. It's within range of my flying, so I'm going to fly up to it, try and catch it by surprise, move on it quick. Sure. Uh, do and I have advantage, so 28. Uh, 28 is a solid hit, yeah. Fantastic. And I am going to do some damage. And since it hasn't had a turn yet, I get a crit on that. Nice. Oh. 27 so That's going to be 27 damage. And I'm going to go ahead and attack again since uh, I get to attack twice. Sure. 17 a hit. 17 is a hit. Yeah. Fantastic. Still critting. So 35. Oh my God. 35 points of damage. Give you me get a second. two free crits in a turn. Uh, all of my hits crit if I catch them by surprise and they haven't had a turn yet in combat. Wow. <laughs> and since I have uh, uh, is that a- several levels in fighter, I also get that second attack. Is that a magical weapon you're using? Or just a regular... Uh, it is a magical dagger, yes. Okay, cool. Okay. 
It has a lot of extra rolls for the damage, not just a, like a flat okay. bonus on it, which is why it kind of goes up quite a bit, at least for the crits. Cool, 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 what cool, in the cool, hell? Cool. That is a big picture. It's a very large picture. Yes, yes. it's a very frightening creature. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, um, okay, how much? The second one was 35 damage. Yeah, so that's going to be 62 total uh, damage. However, um, I got to roll this out and see how much of this is. That's going to be uh, what? four. That's going to be 10 piercing. What? Uh, what? One, and three, piercing, four, to get to 10, 24, 24, 20, 20. Sorry, I'm trying to figure this all out. Um, 2d4 piercing, that's six. Six, 12, 14, 15, um, four, 10, 13. So that's gonna be 28 piercing and and this is for that damage that's already included, right? Or is this yeah. additional? Yeah, okay. for the for the damage that was that I just did on those two okay. attacks, it's gonna be 20, 28 piercing and a bunch okay. of necrotic. Okay. I don't know if the necrotic matters, that's why. Uh no, not in this instance. Uh okay, okay. Okay. Uh Levi. Alrighty. I'm going to uh draw a hand axe oh. from my quiver and throw it. Chuck, just real yeah. quick. Since I have a bonus action as well, I was going to take the uh, use my cunning action to take disengage. Sure, absolutely, you do. Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, make that throw there, Jake. Yeah, ready. Ah, I don't uh, believe a twelve will hit. Twelve is a miss. <clears throat> oh well. Okay, uh, that leaves us with Silas. All right. Well, if it's if it's moved down about twenty five feet, then that's perfectly in range for me to kind of diagonally send up my uh, my echo. I'll kind of put it just slightly beneath and uh, have it smack out at the thing. Sure. Go and attack number one. Oh, that's crit. yeah, Ooh, nice. Crit. Nice. Oh, and that's going to be awesome because I'll use, I've got an effect that I'm going to use for a couple of different things. So it's, it's movement speed will be reduced by 10 and also it will have disadvantage in all attacks for the next turn because of my wow. slasher feet. That is fantastic. Okay. Okay. That makes me happy. Uh, how much okay. damage on that? That is a good question. I don't think it automatically rolls damage for me does if it? you click the damage button it should give you a prompt if it's critical uh okay there we go yeah sorry i hadn't okay wow so 23 and then i got two more attacks to do kill it kill it <laughs> i'm gonna try all right 25 hit 25 absolutely hits i'll go ahead and just do my third attack real quick okay well if 25 does so does a 27 all right, so regular damage, 26. All right. And one more. 19. All right. Okay. Getting some work done. Nice. All right. Uh, that's everyone. I'm going to have the creature start its turn. We're just going to do popcorn on this, I think. Mm. It's still alive, sadly. It is still alive, sadly. <laughs> At least it has disadvantage I did what I on could. its attacks. Yeah, we've pumped some good damage into it, and it's at disadvantage, so. <laughs> now the rest of you can do some work. Okay. So first thing I need to do is roll this. Okay, uh, that changes things for me a little bit because now it is just going to, it's not gonna move because Silas's clone is right there. Mm -hmm. So it is just gonna go all out on Silas's clone. Good, that's actions that's not getting put on us. But it's got disadvantage yeah. on this, right? On attack yep. rolls? All right, so with disadvantage, it gets a 20. That hits. 
Uh, and then it is going to do... If it does more than one damage, or if it does a damage, it's it gone. It does 18 <laughs> damage. damage. Yep. The, the clones are super useful, but they only have one hit point. Okay. So it takes the one hit and poof. So here's what's going to happen. It's then going to resume its movement. It is slower, uh, but rather than trying to climb down, it is just going to leap directly at Grimgar, which means that uh, Bjorn, it moves into your melee range, so you can start your swing. All right. I rage. Nice. Just something Ooh. I can just do at this high of a level. And a whole bunch of things happen. Uh, first of all, uh, storm brews with lightning tracking around me. Um, yeah, let's see here. Sorry, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens when this goes off. Can you That's... keep it down? Because I'm reading. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Well, I, I, I actually, first thing I do is I, I grant you my resistance to uh, electrical and fire attacks. Nice. Um, nice. And I'm going to make my attacks so I get more than one. Uh, okay. So here is my first attacks. If I can find my hair. Sorry. Right here. Uh, bam. First attack. Wow, that's a, a nat one is an 18. Yeah. <laughs> In 5th edition, is rolling a nat 1, is that automatically a crit fail? I don't think I so. I will look it up. I mean, for attacks, it is an automatic miss. Okay. The same way that a 20 is an automatic hit. Okay. Um, well, but that's just that a 20 isn't an automatic hit in 5th edition. You still have to overcome its... Uh, that's for Pathfinder. So anyway, uh, I'm still going to yeah, count okay. that 18 as a hit. <laughs> uh, okay, well... Uh, either way, there even we go. on a bad day, you can still hit this critter. Yeah. Uh, and then 13. my second attack. That's like max strength, zero dexterity. Uh, yeah. Uh, 15 points. All right. Now, um, a bolt of lightning is going to hit it. Uh, okay. Hold on. Now, where is it? There's this. You've come to the wrong neighborhood, spider. Horrifying creature, spider thing. The real question is, is it is it wearing a diaper and asking for candy? I mean, it looks like it might be wearing a diaper, so, I mean. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I want candy, bubblegum and taffy. Right, it needs to make a strength saving throw, otherwise it's knocked prone. It's also going to take some damage. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to guess that's a fail. Yeah. So you guys don't even need me. I may actually just sit down and read this book. <laughs> Dan just sits down and keeps reading the book. I become cursed. <laughs> yeah. We turn around. We're like, yay, we protected Dan. And he's dead. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, I'm try trying to figure out where the damage is because it also takes a lightning bolt, which I think is 48, but I'm not finding it. What's the uh, name of this uh, ability? This is uh, my storm auras, which I have got like four different ones. Uh, storm auras. See, here it is. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Oh, is this your raging storm? Yeah, 3d6 damage and then it can make a dex dc plus uh, at 17 for half damage okay dex saving throw i'm giving it disadvantage because you are knocking it prone awesome so that's a 17 and how much damage was it taking 3d6 uh, i'll let you roll that if you want 17. Nice. Okay. Um, it's still up. It's knocked prone, which I'm going to say interrupts its ability to finish its actions against uh, Grimgar. 
Uh, so I'll tell you what, uh, Grimgar is the only one who hasn't gone, so Grimgar gets to go. Uh, Grimgar, you'll also be starting up the next round. Okay. I actually have rage damage bonus too, but it's going to take too long to find it. So you go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I guess in this case, I'll just turn around and attempt to squish it with my hammer. Sure. <laughs> Can you just shut up? Ed Bug. Um, I really thought you were going to say you were going to try and squish it with the book. Um, I'm going to do a divine strike on it here. Hmm. So let me uh, roll the attack. It's uh, and it was like the hand of. It's prone. Yeah, Ooh. take your advantage. All right. Nice. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. All right, and then I get to do what is it? Two d eight. Two d eight radiant plus your regular warhammer damage too. Yeah. So let me. I'll just roll the regular hammer, and then I'll just roll two d eight for sure. the radiant. Eight. Okay. Wow, low damage. <laughs> That's okay, because you just enough? cave this thing's head in. <laughs> nice. It Minimal effort. Just turn around on the boat. Just slain. <laughs> okay. Keep it down in here. It's a library. <laughs> I, lo I would love to think that you still have the book in one hand, and you just look over and just... That's that's it. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, the librarian is dead, lying on the floor nearby. This terrible creature that descended from the ceiling is also very dead. Uh, uh, can we check his, his diaper in the librarian's rooms? <laughs> so the creature's diaper doesn't have anything. No. But if you check his the diaper. librarian. Uh, let's see. What does the librarian have? A Rolodex for all the books. Uh, sadly, no. No Rolodex. <laughs> uh, you do find that the librarian has a wand oh. tucked into its robes. Ooh. Looks like a magic wand. Somebody want it? Or should I just pocket it? Uh, it's not, it's not a weapon immediately recognizable to me, so I have no interest. I don't think I likewise has... have no interest in wands. Does anybody have detect magic? Um, I believe I do actually. Hmm. Or no, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I have identify. Oh, even better. Even better. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I will do. I will cast identify on the wand. I learned its properties and how to use it. Let's Whether it requires see. attunement and how many charges it has. Be smart boy. Hmm. Look for something specific. Uh, in the meantime just as a, an aside, I'll set that book down like in a distant corner of the room and prepare to thaumaturgy it up. <laughs> okay. Because that sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, Jake, let's see if I can find that item for you. Uh, it's right here. It is a wand of lightning bolts. Ooh. Find your character and I'll add it. You are you are keeping it, Jake, or do you want me to take it or someone else? Does someone else? <laughs> if anybody else would like it, I I'm uh, I'm quite satisfied with smiting things. Well, you have a wand of lightning bolts in your inventory, so if someone else wants it, drag it into theirs. All right. Uh, I will say, checking it out, it has naturally this wand comes with seven charges. It only has two remaining on it. You never know. Mm hmm. Could come in handy. I'm guessing five adventurers came in here and got lightninged up. Mm hmm. So, what's next? Uh, <laughs> I'll go set that book down in the corner and thaumaturgy it open. Sure. Are our souls drained? 
Uh, hang on just a second. Just like in the ending of Indiana Jones. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for looking that up, Bert. I play too many systems. To the I end of Indiana Jones. Track of what does what. Yeah, same here. Uh, let's see. So, Dan, mm -hmm. your magic is the thing opening this book. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and make me a con save. Oh, it still affects me anyways. Magic books. They, they're they smarter than the average book. Yeah, mm. I was afraid of that. That's why I stopped reading. Not terrible. Uh, you pass. That's fantastic. Yay. Um, yeah, nothing bad happens. Okay, well, I guess now that it's open, I'll go make more mistakes and look and see what it says. Um, it is a a spell book of sorts. Very specific, a uh, necromancer spell book. Um, looking through it, you can see all these different kind of, you know, wizardly necromancer style spells. And just so we're all clear, this book contains every single necromancy spell. So oh. if we had wizards, they could add all the necromancy spells to their spell book. If, you know, they wanted to take the time and spend the money to do it. Wow. Neat. I guess I'll throw it in my bag in case we want to have a necromancer for some reason someday. <laughs> That's something that you recruit into your party normally, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's what, the worst that could happen? Yeah. What's uh, what's everyone else doing? Or rather, mm. maybe I'll destroy it someday. <laughs> mm, yeah. I guess just one one more quick look around, make sure there isn't anything worth uh, mm -hmm. thieving. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you with your perception check you got earlier, I'll let you roll that over. Other than the books, there doesn't seem to be anything of value in this room. Mm, are there any books that have titles that I would be interested in as you a uh, need assassin? To, you need to give me a perception test. Oh, okay. That is a terrible perception nah, test. You don't find anything cool. I can't possibly be bothered to dust off the spines of these books and look. Yeah. Does the demon's body like dissipate into ash or anything like that after it's no. slain? It actually looks like it's some form of like golem with all these different kind of monster parts attached onto it. I'm going to take a bite just to see. Okay, you do. <laughs> uh, luckily, it's not poisonous. And even if it was, you're immune to poison. So we're all good. It's a bit gamey. Yeah. Anyone else doing anything in here? I mean, Ooh, I, uh, I searched once, so twice technically. So I real quick, um, does anybody in here have a really cool weapon that you're super proud of? I mean, define really cool and really proud of. I don't know. Just I something that's badass. That I have per I've personally yeah, blessed my whip to make it magical. Ooh. Well, that's cool. Uh, feel like sharing it? No. I knew that answer okay. was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Is there a reason why you're asking this question? Oh, I can just do this really cool bond thing with up to two weapons. And I'll pull out my uh, my awesome dagger and kind of spin it in my hand for a second. I already got one. So I'd you're love trying to have to, a second. You're trying to bond with someone else's weapon? There's no rule says I can't. <laughs> I'll Could pull out in. another dagger from my quiver and throw it towards you, not at you. Just there you go. Oh, uh, sweet. <laughs> I'll pick it up, look at it, kind of nod a little bit like, yeah, this this could do. Look around the room. Do we have an hour to spare? That's up to all you. An hour is a short rest. Yeah, we can take a short rest. Yeah, there's a door Steve here Burr that's sturdy. Mind that. Yeah. Okay. Is it just a normal dagger, Jake? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so during that hour while we're taking a short rest, I will go ahead and bond with this dagger. Sure, let's do short rest. And then All I'll right. uh, just hand it right back to Jake and say, here you go, you can you can use that, stash it, whatever. Okay, I'll put it away. 
All right, I guess I'll roll some dice of healing. Yeah. Mm. So you can choose how many dice you can roll up yeah. to your. Okay. So yeah, you'd have fifteen hit dice at this point. So trying to figure out how this works exactly. Okay, if you do it through the sheet, it didn't ask me how many I want to roll, but yeah, it does same. deduct to them. And it didn't roll it either. I sh- oh, no, it didn't. Yeah, I don't see a way to tell it how many I want to use, but it is deducting them out. Yeah. Just hit short rest till you spent all the oh, dice it, you want to spend. It's actually adding them to my hit point pool automatically too, which is nice. Neat. So I'll just keep hitting it until I'm full. <laughs> Bird, is it not pulling your... No, it is. Okay. It's, yeah. So I oh. used... Uh, I'll stop at three. There we are. Neat. That's a. That's actually kind of a... I like the way that's set up. Yeah. My... Especially with it, like, auto-adding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My only complaint so far about this character sheet is the fact that when you would hit your die to roll it it doesn't roll it it just puts it in chat and you roll it from there mm. yeah it's a little bit of extra work yeah still not terrible it'd be nice if they had that like attack dialogue right when you hit it and then it put the damage box in it or whatever like yeah. some of them do anyway you all take we're well rested rest. you heal up Hooray. what's next well there's spooky door or there's uh, statues yet, or there's back to the room that we understand very little about. I mean, our clue suggests that there should be one around here somewhere, a shard. Yeah, hidden behind the reverse. The shard is as safe as can be, hidden behind the reverse of a party. And we're looking for like a broken sword shard, right? Yeah. That's, that's, right. that's the deal. Yep. Yeah. I guess I'll just start uh, yanking all the books out of the shelves. Sure. Mm. <clears throat> just throwing them down. Okay. You spend some time. You rip all the books down. You don't find anything cool in here. Uh, you get the feeling that this may not be the room with that missing shard, or, uh, shard in it. Yeah. There's still the scary door. We yeah, let's try the scary it. door. Mm. Let's smite it. Sure. Uh, I'm going to bring the scary door back up. Of course, last time we opened a scary door, it just was a, a trap and it hurt us. But... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to show this image again so everyone can be reminded. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, you see the scary door. Uh, solid stone, demonic drow, eyes, nostrils, mouth have tunnels leading into the stone. Uh, but they're curved tunnels, so you can't see through it. What do you want to do? And is it locked if I thaumaturgy it? Uh, it's not locked. Do you want to thaumaturgy it open? Oh, well, let's stand at 30 foot distance and thaumaturgy the door open, I guess. Sure. Mm-hmm. The door flies open. And inside, you see, I've got a picture. And then I'm going to read some words. Game over, said the day's <laughs> room. Mm-hmm. Inside, there's a raised obsidian dais with two steps uh, that wraps around the far end of this 30 by 30 room. In the center of the dais is a throne uh, exquisitely wrought with massive twisted bones highlighted with gold inlay. At the foot of this throne is a simple stand uh, also composed of bone. And on the stand rests an opalescent white globe, um, about a foot in diameter. On each side of the steps, two 10 foot tall, bulky humanoid figures stand at attention. Each appears to be stitched from mismatched body parts, uh, all in various stages of decay. Each figure cradles an inky black globe between its hands. And on the back wall behind the throne is a tapestry depicting an eye. Mm. 
anything else of note in this room other than that, or that's it. Like along the walls, or nope, that's it. And, okay, and the wall behind them is stone. Yep, thirty by thirty stone room. Okay. Uh, and I actually, I got a map. I'll go ahead and just move us over to this. Ooh, T do T. All those definitely. Uh, I'm sure they're not bad guys. How tall is this door, and how likely are these hulking creatures to get through it? <laughs> mm. Uh, the door about ten feet. Dang creatures, it. ten feet. I don't think I'm only seeing like myself it. in this room, and the room is kind of dark. Let me take that, a look uh, at your. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, okay. Oh, what? Okay, so if I select my token, everything goes dark. Oh, oops. I selected uh, someone else's token, and now I can't select mine again. Yep. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, I just don't have vision uh, I did set the same. your token. I can't I can, see. If I, I can be I whiny can and needy. Myself and that's yep, I got you. I'll get that fixed. I, I might need a duplicate soon. I apologize. Uh, there we go. Which one are you? That's Shazbot. That's still the wrong name. That's okay. It's still kind of funny. That's Levi. There is... All right. Your duplicate's right next to you. Awesome. Nice. Okay. Uh, this is probably going to be a, a thing that we fight here, if I had to hazard a guess. How tall is the just ceiling likes trap? Maps. Maps. I like maps. maps. That's he fine. Just likes maps. But if it doesn't hurt anybody's feelings, I'm willing to send out the hollow one. Sure. Hey, Chuck, how tall is the ceiling? Uh, 10 feet. Oh, it's only 10 feet tall? Yeah. And these things are 10 feet tall? Uh, I'll say the ceiling's 12 feet. Goodness right. gracious, that is a short ceiling. Yes, it is. I'm 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 uh, going to hiding, sneaking. Sure. All right, so Silas, are I'll you... I'll send the Echo out into the middle of the room and... Okay. Just see if something happens. Does your your clone count as a living creature or construct? That's a good one. Let me see what the wording on that is. Sorry. Okay, manifest an echo, knock my face. Uh, Seiko is magical, translucent, gray image view that lasts until destroyed. So it doesn't count as a living quite creature it sounds like it's just a magical manifestation okay. so yeah your uh your echo walks across the room makes it up to the little platform with this white sphere on top of it touch the sphere <laughs> <laughs> well do you want me to poke one of those figures I mean, it might make them angry, which we expect to happen anyways, to be honest. I mean, I mean it's got a 10 foot in... reach with the glaive, so it could. Oh, nice. I assume we've been in a dungeon with hulking statues that come to life before. So. So, yeah, what's going on? You know, so I, you know I'll, I'll make sure the party is OK with that before I have the echo like. Poke it with the glaive. Like yeah. the one up and to the right of me would be within 10 feet. Uh, you're talking about this one? Yeah. So yeah, just kind of like get out of the corridor. Mm. Back it up a little bit or or no, just the room. not be. Yeah. Not be in the corridor. <laughs> Seems like a good funnel for a fireball. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a very good idea. Yeah, can we uh, stand to the side like the giant tapestry with the eye. How wide is the eye? Uh, it's, you know, a foot or so across. Okay, so yeah, I want to stand off to the side of that eye. 
That corner right there sounds just fine. Okay. So you're all moving in along the back wall, getting out of the hallway. I'll still kind of stay back a little bit myself, but... Okay. Uh, what's the knight doing? Uh, I'm just I'm just hiding, going into sneak mode. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead and make that attack. This is going to go terribly, I think. I mean, maybe. Maybe, or maybe it's good. I don't maybe know. Maybe it'll be great. It could be. So did you make your attack roll? I, I want a 23. 23 is a definite hit. Give me a damage. Big How old damage? powerful sweeps. 22. Oh, yeah. You take that thing out. Uh, but as you swing and you cut this thing down, it's almost like this thing's made of, think like paper mache, mm. like a pinata that no one wants to break open. Mm -hmm. And as you cut this one down, it starts buzzing and humming very loudly oh, as no, you can bees. see where it collapses something some things start emerging from that one. Oh no bees. I've made a huge mistake as you see we've all made a mistake on this day this is amazing they're this going to put he meant well on my tombstone. Large, hideous, blood red wasps start crawling out. Oh, God. no. Uh uh. Okay. I think uh, this ugh. is a great time for initiative. Oh, so no. everyone just clicks on the fist tab. You can just hit the D20 icon there to roll the initiative for you. Oh, um, I get um, advantage, so do, should I roll it twice? Yep, roll it twice, or... and then I'll just update it with whichever number you go with. Uh, oh, it won't let me roll it twice. If the, you... The die has disappeared. I just I mean, roll so you got an 11. On. Yeah, I'll just roll another D20 here. Yeah, I can hit reroll for if you want to roll that oh, again. Wow, so that'll be uh, sixteen plus dex eight, eighteen. Eighteen. Yep. Nice. Cool. Uh, let's see, Silas, uh, your clone. Does that go on your turn? Yeah. Uh, what did you get? A nine. Nine. Cool. 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 Just a second. Okay. Bjorn, you're up first. All right. Um, uh, these things in the back. Yep. And that's Silas's uh, clone. I'm going to rush these two, go into a rage. Sure. Uh, before, as you start rushing, uh, why don't you go ahead and make me a wisdom save? Okay, is this a trap? It is a magical trap. Don't okay, forget I, you have advantage on wisdom saves. Yeah, I get advantage on uh, any kind of, yeah. Uh, okay. uh, either way, I would get it. <laughs> uh, so it's a save. Yep. Okay, uh, with advantage. Oh, jeez. Oh, a four no. is the best that I get with advantage. Wow, <laughs> that hurts. Ouch. So it's when you get right there that a magical rune that was invisible f beforehand immediately lights up and flashes. And... Uh, you are now under the effect of the hold person spell. 
Ah, um, okay. So actually, if that's a spell, um, I have another thing. Sure. Let me find it here. Give me a second. Where is it? Where is it? Come on. Oh, sorry, Chuck. There's just so much of the 15th uh, level. 15th character. level characters are crazy. Where's my shield? Well, they're just spell guard shield. Okay. I don't know if it matters, but spell attacks have disadvantage against me, but I don't think you had to roll that. I just no. had to make mm-hmm. a save. Okay. So, yeah. so, yeah. You're under the hold person spell. So, for... The next minute, you are paralyzed, but on each of your turns, uh, you can attempt that save again. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, you see Bjorn start charging across, gets a few steps in, and then just there's a flash of magical energy, and he's just hard locked. As. This dude starts moving. It's a very unnatural, jerky movement. Uh, But this black orb it's holding, rather than it takes a step forward, and then it just throws this black orb at Silas's clone, and it smashes onto the floor in front of Silas. And this is going to do a couple things. That's this one. Sorry, this is there's a lot of stuff all over here. No worries. Um you're going to need to give me a Saving throw. Okay. Yep, a dexterity 15 saving throw. As it nice. shatters and this black ooze starts spilling out on the ground underneath your clone. Is it fair to assume that's magical? Uh, no, this would not be magical. Okay. All right. Here we go. Regular roll. Nope. I will use... How many times do I get indomitable? I mean... Is it worth it to save the clone? No, it's not. Good point. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So on that failed save, your clone is now just prone. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's showing that on your token, too, since it's a copy. But only your clone is is prone. Okay. Um, And that's that thing's turn. Levi, you're up. All these dudes are holding the black orbs, right? Uh, yeah, so there was one black orb on the ground, like right here, that the first one, when he fell, fell, it didn't break open. But these other two, yes, they are also holding these black orbs. All right. Uh, well, then the one that's uh, directly in front of me, the northeast corner. Yeah. I'm going to use my talisman of pure good on it. But uh, I'm going to expend one of its seven charges and choose a creature I see on the ground within 120 feet of me. If the target is of evil alignment, a flaming fissure opens under it. The target must succeed on a DC 20 dexterity saving throw or fall into the fissure and be destroyed, leaving no remains. Wow. Whoa. (laughs) Okay. So this this is complicated because... It's a pinata of more creatures. The pinata is unaligned, but the creatures inside mm. are not. And they're not on the ground. And so they are not on the ground. I hold up my talisman, do a doobly doo, nothing happens. Okay. <laughs> That's so awesome. I mean, it's really freaking cool to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, This one, very shambling, takes a couple of steps forward, and it is going to throw its orb at you, Levi. So you need to give me a save as well, Uh, and this was a dexterity saving throw. All right. Since it's against an effect I can see, 
Yeah. I can make it uh, with advantage. Oh, no. Or maybe I can't make it with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be... Let me shift that. Okay, so you slip and fall prone. So these areas that I'm putting on the ground, mm -hmm. uh, those are now greased areas. As this thick, oily grease just spreads out. So, Levi, you're prone. Alright. I'll be right back. The batteries in my mouse are dying. That is understandable. Feed the mouse. Yes. Cool. Uh, Just the knight. Out of, yeah. Out of fairness, do I need to also make a check since I'm in that? You are. Oh yes, you are. I did. Wasn't even thinking. You do need to make that check. Dexterity saving okay. throw. Maybe There's... you will be prone after all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, my oh, goodness. You're prone. Eh, you know, it's okay. Okay. Uh, I where's Jake? I can't see his token, so uh, he's uh, in the back right corner. corner. Yeah, the right lower. Oh, he's corner. in the back corner. Gotcha. In, okay. in all of our adventuring, we've never seen an oil spill in our lives. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so the first group of these gnarly wasps start their turn, and they are going to fly over to Silas's clone. All right. Oh, did I not get to go? Uh, where are you at? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I okay. got distracted. It is your turn. That's my bad. I didn't. I, I messed things up see. by asking about the save. I wasn't looking to see what the order was, so. Yeah, no. I just knew I was bad. 13. Yep. Okay. Nope. It's your turn. Uh, crap. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, boy. That's not going to be, um, well. Two, three, four. Okay, so I'm trying to look at measurement here, Chuck. If I, from the very, very corner, top right corner of this room. Yeah. I'd be at least 20 feet away from... This room is 30 by 30. So from where you're at right, right now to that corner is 35 feet. Since right. you're in the doorway. Yeah, I'm just thinking diagonally. If I actually was going from the actual corner, then I'd have the full length of that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if you run straight to that back corner, that's 30 feet. Okay. Okay. This is very important because I don't want to hit. Uh, I don't want to hit anybody. So what are you doing? Um, actually, you know what? The best thing I might be able to do is for now, I'm going to just telepathically communicate to everybody. We need to back into the hallway and draw these things into a group. Okay. Anything and else? Nope. I'm just going to stay hidden and that's my turn. Okay. So now the creature wasp gets to go. It's going to make an attack. So let me roll that. Ooh, it's a critical fail. Ooh. Uh, let me take a look here. Um, actions. Save to hit. There's our damage. Okay. Yeah, that's just a miss. Go oh. kill. Nice and easy. All right. Silas's. You're both prone on the ground. Nice. I just read up that the echo has one benefit that it's immune to conditions even though it only has one hit point so it doesn't i'm on the ground it's not but i'll spend half my movement to to get up okay um 
And then I will spend another five feet of my movement to kind of move back in here. So there, the uh, swarm thing is like right up on me, correct? Right on your clone. Okay. Yeah. I'll move my clone just a little bit to the right. Sure. Um, and I'll smack at the swarm first, I suppose. Okay. Give it a go. Fifteen hit? No. Nope. Okay. Okay, let's try a sixteen. No. Okay. Let's try a fumble. I get grief. Also, sadly, no. All right. Uh, have okay. you considered doing better? <laughs> have you considered doing better? Yeah, I I don't have the accuracy that Bert does. I the the whole heavy weapon mastery makes it harder to hit, but when you do hit, it's pretty solid. Yeah. Oh, I, I, this is rich coming from me of all people. I mean, that's, yeah. That's, no, that's fair. <laughs> I deserve it. Don't worry. I'll humiliate myself soon. All right. So. That was your clone. What are you doing? Uh, I mean, that's still my, my, you know, I stood up, moved. I had it attack on my behalf. Oh, okay. And I moved just slightly out of the way. Okay. So All I'm not right. standing in Greece anymore. Cool. Uh, Dan, what is Grimgar doing? Yeah. Um, I don't really want to go in there because it seems like it's a dangerous place to be. Yeah. But, um, boy, I don't know that we're necessarily going to get them all bunched up very quickly either. So I may, may go ahead and drop a spell here. So let me do, do, do. Uh, I was going to drop it first on, I think, these guys back here. Okay, cool. Uh, they need to make saving throws for constitution. Yep. Cool. Since they're closest to our uh, helpless friends. <laughs> Constitution saving throws. Uh, one of them got a 13, the other got a 9. Okay. Then they will fail. What happens? 18 radiant damage to everything that starts its turn in there or is in there for its first time. <laughs> Okay, so both it's a, it's of these... It's an ongoing effect. ...are um, playing. And you can hear the buzzing noise as these wasps inside start working their way out. Nice thing is, is when they start their turn, they'll take some damage, correct? Yep. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, when a creature enters the spell's area for the first time or starts its turn there. So. Okay, so this first one starts its turn there. Uh, needs to make that save as well. Yep. Uh, 22. Oh, so it passes. Strange. Does it take any damage? Uh, let me see. It may take half. Half as much. So it'll still okay. take damage. So uh, six. Okay. Not as much as I had hoped. Trying to avoid us getting another grease ball thrown. Okay. So this one's going to fly up to Bjorn. Seeing as Bjorn is paralyzed. Uh, let's see. Advantage on the attack. If you hit me, it's automatically a critical. Oh, gosh. Well, Maybe I, did a dumb I don't think it's going to do an attack on you. Uh, it is going to deal you 10 points of damage 
as these creep these wasps this swarm of wasps start flying trying to crawl in your nose in your ears in your mouth uh it's going to take them oh. a little bit to do what they want to do but they're trying to get in you and you take some damage from it oh no okay uh, Bjorn, it is your turn. You want to make that save? Yeah. Okay. So it's a wisdom check. Yep. And I do have advantage. Uh, saving throw advantage. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I have. That's oh. my dump stat. I've got a okay. very low wisdom. So. I know, but those dice rolls. It's a two, yeah, a two, yeah. a three, and an eight so far. Yeah. Okay. Levi, you're up. Oh, I will get up uh, from my grease stain. Um, uh, let's see. That's going to be half my movement. To get up, uh, yep. Let's see. I will try to travel there with my remaining movement. Sure. Then I'll spend my action to move as close to the hallway as I can. Sure. Give me a wisdom save. Okie dokie. Bing, bang, boop. That's not, I don't want an ability check. I want to save. Don't forget you've got advantage. Uh, Silas, ah, let's go good. ahead and make that for me, too. Oh, my gosh. Boy, we are not about making saves right now. So, Silas, you pass. Uh, Jake, you also Yay. come under the effect of the old person <clears throat> spell. So you are paralyzed for the next minute. At the end of each of your turns, you can make a save to try and undo that. Right home. Uh, this one needs to make a save, a con save. Uh, 19, is that a pass? That is a fail. All right, how much damage? Uh, 19 this time. Uh, 19 points of damage. All right, cool. All right. I have that recorded. So it flies out. Um, it's going to do the same thing to you, Levi. It flies up to you. In your paralyzed state. Oh, that's the wrong thing. We're just going to say that's where that rune was that triggered. Uh, Levi, you take 10 points of damage as these wasps are trying to crawl into you. Oh, jeez. And as they... As they're attacking him and he's within five feet of me, I'll use my sentinel ability to attack them. Sure. Nice. 27 Stop to it. hit. Get them bees. 23 damage. 23 damage. Not bad at all. No, he's not quite. Cool. All right. Um, this flesh golem is going to make an attack. At, let's see. At Silas's clone. Cool. 26 to hit. Yep. I'm sure he does at least one damage. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah, 14 damage. Dust in the wind. Um, it does its job. That's that's a hit that one of us didn't have to take. So then yeah. it's going to start shambling its way over to the real Silas. So okay. that's the closest. But it does pass through the grease. He needs to make a dexterity save. <laughs> and it <laughs> fails. And it falls prone right here. In the grease. Awesome. The knight. Oh, God. I can't do what I want to do because there's too many people in the freaking way. Um, I mean, these are all technically clear to hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you seriously underestimate the range of damage I'm about to lay out. <laughs> and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do a lot of damage to my, <laughs> to anybody else. <laughs> wow. So, 
Unfortunately, I'm limited to single target attacks at this moment. <laughs> you might have to just explain yourself more next time so we can. Yeah, I've got an area of effect attack I was going to try and throw down, but uh, it's got a pretty wide range of area. <laughs> okay. I mean. Hence the everybody back away out of the room. <laughs> well, the, there's one person who can't move from the room. I know. So, and that's, yeah. I was, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're kind of stuck at the moment. Um, let's see. What can I do here? Um, I might be able to limit our targets a little bit. Okay. What are you doing? Um, so if I aim at the very far back right corner, that should be from the center of that square, it's about 20 feet to where bird is but if i aim at the very back corner i'm thinking that should be just barely 20 feet to the edge of where he is right uh he is in 20 feet damn it so do you got- it do it <laughs> <laughs> uh, so all this. right all righty well if you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can actually say anything, but <laughs> right. I don't. Um, You're like, I'm going to cast a big spell, and he's just like, rrr, rrr. yeah. I mean, I can talk telepathically to everybody. I suppose I could ask him. You know, are you are you ready for some hurt? <laughs> yep. Uh, ready for some football? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick one of the beads off my uh, necklace of fireballs and oh, chuck oh, that's fine. chuck it yeah. into that back <laughs> corner, um, right here sure that is a 20 foot radius in all directions um it's a level three look who's laying down in a pool of grease uh which is going to be 8d6 fire damage on a failed save so let's uh and two bad guys in a pile of grease yeah i'm resistant to fire anyway so it'll it'll help still hurt (laughs) okay so what do they need to do make a save uh, yeah, it's a saving throw, DC 15 dexterity um, from right. All right. So oh, and actually it has a it has a template that I can put down. Okay. I'm, we're, we don't need to worry about awesome. that. Uh, this Silas is gone, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. Yes. I just didn't. I had removed him because I'll, I'll put him back in just a second. Uh, 1d20. Oh. Uh, dexterity saving throw. Oh, that's for me to do it. Okay, I don't. Want, I don't need to do that. All right. Gotcha. So roll that damage out. Okay. Da, 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 da. Thirty-six. Okay. Half on a pass. Uh, so that would be eighteen on a pass. So the wasp hmm. takes nine points of damage. Oh no! Mm. Oh, is it halved again? As well. no, it's a hell wasp, so it may be yeah, resistance. Okay, but the great news is, is it completely destroys that golem. Yay! Setting forth more wasps. Uh, also, is the oil flammable? <laughs> yes, it is. Then How the oil is now that? on fire as well. Uh, Thirty-six. Okay, so I take uh, fifteen, eighteen. Okay. Now, so, so again, there's there's a template thing that it throws down, which I just put down on the board. I don't know if anybody else can see it. Yep, can. That's just that's just the template thing that it creates from the spell. So I don't know if we want to use that or not. Uh, we don't need to keep that out there. You did your your damage. Uh, the okay. pools of grease light on fire. So now there's this big swath of just fire cutting the room in half. Two of the wasps are in that area of damage. Um, Looks like you shouldn't take damage, Bert, maybe. So Bert will take that initial damage, but won't take the ongoing fire damage. Well, that's that's why I was throwing down that template, because according to the range template thing that it auto-creates, Bert is not I'm even good in with range. It. That's fine. Don't worry about it. So... I'll take the initial 18, but I'm not in the continual mm, effect. Right. i got to edit this. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, I have eight left there. Let's fix that. Yeah. 
black here. I wish they would use... I'm working off of the pre-edited version of this. So it does some... Yeah, they don't do great. So... Okay. Uh, just as my bonus action, I will rehide. Cool. All right. I got to update a couple things real quick. Cool, 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 cool. All right. This wasp is going to fly up to Silas and start dinging away. Come and get me. I'm here. All right. So stings. They only get a single attack. All right. 15 to hit. No. Okay. Stylish, you're up. Okay. Wow. There is a lot going on here. I'll put my duplicate basically flanking with myself so it'll have reach to all three of these guys. All right, let me make your duplicate real quick. Are you putting him in the grease fire? Yeah, because I mean, he's immune to conditions. Okay, now being and I'll, hmm. that area is on fire, so as soon as he spawns there, he's going to take fire damage. Oh, I see, I see. And this, and this place you said was only 10 feet high, right? Uh, ceiling is about 12 feet. Okay, how? Because I can create him off the floor. How high is the fire? Would you say? Uh, like, could I put him like? It's burning. I'll say like two and a half feet up. Okay, so maybe I'll just create him like five feet up in the air or okay. something. Okay, so it's like his kind of heads up against the ceiling a bit. Yeah. Okay. He's got a good ten foot reach on the glaive, so he should still be able to. Okay. Nice. Sure. I'm a cheesy bastard. Sure. <laughs> and then because the wasps on Levi have already taken damage, I'll focus fire on them first. On this one here? Sure. Yeah. So we'll try and do better. 20? 20 is a hit. I would actually, since all the attacks would be against Hell Wasp, even if one of them goes down, I'll just get all three out. 17 is a hit. Okay. 11 is a miss. Okay. All right. So we got two damage rolls. Bring it back out. So we've got 25. Wow, that's fantastic. And then we've got 23. Uh, nice. You slay the swarm of hell wasps that are trying to enter into Levi. Excellent. And thanks to Great Weapon Mastery, if I slay a foe, I can use... No, I had to use a bonus action to create my uh, echo. So I can't do that. Mm. Move that off the map so it's out of the way. Yeah, okay. That's your turn. That's my turn. Grimgar. Well, crap. I probably just did a dumb thing with my spell, but I'm sorry, but I'm going to probably cost you your bonus action again because I could move that template, which got deleted off the map, um, oh, yeah. on my turn. My bad. What's your so thing? Uh, it was the moon moonbeam. Mm. Where are you putting that? What are you doing? I was just gonna put it in the center so I can hit both of these hell wasps. Which I'll you like should. It. My I Bum. can recreate my thing. Like my thing's totally expendable. You yeah. make the best use of your spell slot. So, I'll just move it so it'll hit this square here. Perfect. There. Cool. Uh, so these wasps need to make some saves, constitution saves. Yep. I can pop the template out again if you want to. Yeah, I got that blue circle there. That's good enough. Or I mean the, the spell thing. So. Oh. Nope. I got my saves. Neither of them pass. Okay. You want damage twice or just once for both? Uh, once for both is fine. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. And that way I can save us a big old block of text. Nope. Two time. Too long. Damage. Twelve on both. And does it do damage even on a, a failed save or a successful save? I mean, yep, it does have okay. damage. 
Yeah, even if it does. So as long as it does half damage on a successful thing, then oh, the oh, the clone's gone. No, it's that was the good call. Okay. Anything else? Uh, that's my action. So. Okay. Back at the top, um, this wasp here now is a Silas clone to attack. Well, the, oh, the, clone's the clone's dead gone. now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Damn. Uh, it's going to fly down here and attack regular Silas then. Good. It is still in fire, isn't it? Or is it above it? It's now flying up above the fire. I guess that's true. They're flying, aren't they? Yeah. I did take a little bit of damage because that one did start its turn on the ground. Mm. Uh, 24 to hit. Uh, yes, it does. And... So let's see. That is going to deal 19 base damage. Ooh. And okay. you need to make me a constitution save. Constitution save? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I had an ability. I Actually, don't earlier. worry about it because this is a poison based attack. Excellent. Okay. And okay. then next time I lose an echo, I need to remember to use an ability. Ah. Uh. I can absorb essence when they die. Ah. Uh, all myself right. myself temp HP. Uh, oh, nice. I'm one a jerk. Keeps going after you, Bjorn. Take another 10 points of damage. Uh, and then it does kick to you, Bjorn. So if you want to make that uh, wisdom save. <laughs> no. That's oh, rough. Man. You're just taking a nice nap. <laughs> Levi. Oh, man. Uh, luckily, you don't have one of these things trying to crawl down your throat, but you do need to make a wisdom save <clears> for me. And I make it with advantage still, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, if you got an ability to let you. Uh, Heroes Feast did that for everyone. That does it. Oh, finally. That was <laughs> the end of your turn. You're no longer paralyzed. The knight, you're up. You're muted, too. Oh, I am. I'm going to try and attack this guy right here. Sure. Just a good old-fashioned, regular old attack. Sure. I'm a red -ass with, a, with a totally normal, completely mundane, off-the-shelf cursed knife. Okay. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. 27, I'm guessing. That's hits. a hit, yep. Mm. All right. And he is adjacent to an ally. So I do get my sneak attack. You do. So there's normal damage. Wow. Um, let's do sneak attack damage. And another Oof. 16. Nice. So that is uh, 41. Some of that is necrotic. I can look it up if you need me to. Nope. Well, I am good. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Uh, bonus action, I will go. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, I get to attack twice, actually. You should do that. Uh, yeah, you hey. should. Heck yeah. Uh, ba -ba. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will attack him again. 22 is a hit. And 23 more damage. So Ooh, nice. 44, 64 total. Awesome. Okay. Uh, this one, your clone's gone again, right? Yes. I'm just going to move it up here in the corner so we can bring it back later if we need. If he's uh, starting his turn, though. Uh, yes, needs a constitution save. 14, that's a fail. You want to give me some damage? Yes, indeed. Let's see here. There it is. More. 14 damage. Cool. All right. Uh, Silas, this one is going to try and sting you. That's fair. I deserve it. Oh, critical fail. Does not. Silas, it's your turn. Okay. Um, 
I'll hold off on creating the duplicate just in case I get lucky on putting somebody down. So I'll tack the one to the right. I think the one to the right of me is the one that just took all that damage from that the knight, correct? Correct, yeah. All right, so I'll focus on it first. All right. 24 hit? hit? Yeah. 25 damage. You slay it? Wonderful. Nice. All right, I'm going to turn around and attack the one above me. 17? 17 is a hit. Awesome. Okay. Do 25 damage to him. Okay. Pull that back up. So I've got my third attack. Nope. So that was 25. Go ahead. The good news is, is I killed somebody earlier. I do, I can, instead of creating an echo, use my bonus action to just do an extra attack, which I will. Okay. Bless it. Oh, that hurts. (laughs) Mm. Mm. Okay. (laughs) You. Mm. Grimgar. Uh, I'll just leave my template there. Yeah, and I guess I'll probably move. I want to remember how he got over here. I'll kind of move here and then there. Now, after these runes triggered, <laughs> mm-hmm. you can see them glowing on the ground, so you can avoid stepping on them. Okay, I just want to get to where I can engage this hell wasp over here without. Uh... That's on Bjorn. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. Okay. Oh, we both moved. Oh, it. sorry, there we both go. moved it. Nope, that's fine. There you go. All right. Uh, and then I'm gonna try and, and smash him a little bit. Sure thing. Let me get my character sheet. I had to restart Forge here. That's fine. If you just double click on your token, it'll open your character sheet. Yep, I'm, I'm back in it here. So I'll do a uh, divine strike and stick that on my attack here. Wow, Ooh. critical hit. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, nice. So. I'll roll critical regular damage and then two more D8 radiant. 48. Four, is it 48? Because it's a crit. Oh, wow. It's probably the most damage I'm going to do the entire campaign here. Wow. Oh, Holy yeah. Wow. <laughs> 55. It is not lethal, but you do a whole lot of damage to this thing. That's awesome. Okay. I was useful once, almost. Yay. Maybe. That was fast. Um, Bjorn, these things keep going at you. Another 10 points of damage. Um, yeah, and Bjorn, it's your turn. Okay. Um, try to break out again. Yeah. We believe in you, Bjorn. God bless it. Oh, man. An advantage. <laughs> All of my rolls were horrible. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this wow, the you dice have been untied. Oh my okay. god. Levi, you're up. I think everybody has Dan rolls tonight, except for maybe me. It's okay. You know. Dan, could you get your dice back, please? Come on. Every, everybody <laughs> turn them back in. Or wait, I don't even need to move. I've got a reach weapon with my whip. Nice. So I'm gonna just um I'm gonna go into a rage and attack that uh, swarm up to my up to the northwest Absolutely. of me. Absolutely. Nice. Whip smack. 21's it. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. And uh, sneak attack damage. It's five sneak attack. You get yep. whip damage Plus, on that too. Yep. Plus seven from the whip. And since I'm raging and it's my first attack, I get to deal divine fury damage so an additional 18 radiant damage Mm -hmm. you slay that wasp yay wrong wasp that can't be right 18 this one no it's gonna be this one you're getting there which one were you attacking jake the one right next to you or the one the one uh the ones on bjorn okay let me correct that then now we know oh, how yeah, much that's damage 18. we need to do. <laughs> All right. So what was that? That was 18 plus 5 plus 7. You're going to kill that one. 
Let me double check. Yay. That. Yep. Bjorn is still saved. Bjorn, you have been saved. No, no, not yet. <laughs> not been saved yet. <laughs> now with my second attack, I will attack the ones by Silas. Sure. We are just going to leave you here, though, until yeah. you break out of this on your own. <laughs> just, just a new statue. 21 hits. All righty. Roll out the damage first, and then the sneak attack damage. Yeah, so 12 slashing magical. Okay, it's still up. That's all I got. The knights. <laughs> the knight. The funny thing knight. is I'm still in rage because I have persistent rage unless I'm unconscious or will it <laughs> to stop. So it's like, just like. <laughs> <laughs> I hate napping. <laughs> all right. The knight, what do you got? Uh, oh, Let's not get too fancy here. Let's go. Uh. You know what? Let's just try an Eldridge, Eldridge Blast. All right. You want to hit that attack? 18, 18 is a hit. hit. Five, five is exactly what was needed. Nice. Yay. Sweet. So, as the wasp die, the fire takes a minute to burn down. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bjorn, I wish I knew how to get rid of that stupid measurement thing. I got gotcha. you. There we go. Uh, yeah. Everyone is now conscious. You're in this room. And that is where we're going to end the night because we're past time. All righty. Yeah. Okay. Is that all still frozen in place? That one no. vein on his forehead is throbbing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where we'll end. Um, those weren't words. That is where we'll end. We'll start back up two weeks in this room so you all can do any exploration you want to do or maybe trigger any traps you missed. Uh, we will do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's do some plugs. Defenders of Cobalt. That's where you can find the majority of us the majority of the time. Twitch.tv slash Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, if you swing by tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Central, we're doing Salt Marsh. If you swing by our channel on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Central, we're doing Pathfinder 2. Uh, Thursday, 9 p.m. Central, we're doing Watercolors and Warriors, our 5th Ed Ghibli uh, campaign. And then Friday at 9 p.m., uh, we've got a special little thing going by... Uh, we call him Old Jeff here, but Jeff from Grim and Perilous Studios is running us some kind of special OSR adventure that he's written up, and it's super mysterious. So, Ooh, I'm yeah, jealous. That should be good. Uh, let's see. Bert, what do you got? Oh, yeah. Check out my own stream at twitch.tv slash murder. We have on Tuesdays, first edition Dungeons & Dragons. Friday, BX Dungeons & Dragons. And Sunday is usually uh, up in the air. We're currently doing a shadow run using the Powered by the Apocalypse system and uh, GURPS Traveler on the alternate Sundays. Uh, also check out the podcast at BlueMagic, B-L-U-M-A-G-I-K dot com. There we go. And actually, uh, Monday night, if you go over to twitch.tv slash the lollygaggers, uh, you can catch Jeremy and I over there playing some Alien. Uh, anyway, that's what we got. Crypt of the Devil Itch. We'll be back in two weeks. Uh, two weeks on Danger Strangers to continue this. Uh, I was hoping to get through the first level tonight. Um, Our puzzle <laughs> skills are just not there. It's, you know, it's okay. <laughs> We're working through it. Uh, it is definitely, you know, a jam-packed dungeon. So there's lots of stuff to interact with. Um, so next session, hopefully, we'll make it through the rest of the first level. Uh, You're anyway, not smart. We're not smart, but we take damage good. You take damage real good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all we got. So uh, till next time, uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you later. Uh -huh.